the capacity to be a hero or an anti-hero. I have loved all of that complexity. I auditioned for Thor uh, over a, a quarter of my life ago. I remember thinking I should probably do some exercise because <laughs> Thor is a very athletic character, so I did that. Did my camera test and put on the blonde wig and swung the hammer and had a go. For Outland! <laughs> but I do remember on the piece of paper that I signed, it said the role of Thor slash Loki. I thought, okay. <laughs> Long story short, Chris Hemsworth is definitive in the role of Thor. I certainly <laughs> think so. <laughs> um, and the right decision was made on that day. I'm very glad that it went the way it went. What am I? You're my son. What more than that? The scene with between o Odin and Loki in the vault in the first Thor movie. I'll never forget doing that scene because I had such respect and still do for Sir Anthony Hopkins and suddenly I was having to play tennis with him in a very emotional place but, but he, he couldn't have been kinder. It's where Loki learns the truth of his lineage. Uh, I'm a monster who parents tell their children about at night. And he decides to go it alone, um, sadly <laughs> for Loki because it's not an easy journey he goes on. I said... No! Loki now knows he has no place in Asgard. He doesn't belong there, and he wants no part in it. So he's gone down to Midgard, as they call it, to Earth. And the line is, it's the unspoken truth of humanity that you crave subjugation. The bright lure of freedom diminishes your life's joy in a mad scramble for power. You were made to be ruled. It's about as bad as it gets. But the Avengers are there to stop him. I am a god, you dull creature. And I will not be bullied by that. What is it like to be Hulk smashed? I think the sort of the smash starts in the middle of that line. I am a god, you dull creature, and I will not be bullied by an animal. And I had a piece of wire tied to my ankle, and there was a mat on the floor which was out of shot, and three of the strongest stunt guys holding the wire at the other end of behind the camera. The experience of being yanked out of frame was one I will not forget in a hurry. Puny god. For about two years after that, I couldn't go through uh, airports in anywhere in the world without somebody kind of going, hey, Mr. Loki, I love it when you get Hulk smashed, and they would do the whole thing, and they <laughs> so it became, you know, it became a, a bit of a, a, bit of a thing, um, in a fun way. Have you come to gloat, to mock? Loki enough, no more illusions. A key scene from Thor The Dark World I think is the scene where uh, Thor goes down to the dungeons where Loki's imprisoned to ask for his help, begrudgingly. Thor calls him on it and says, enough Loki, no, no more illusions. And you realize that Loki has created this illusion of, of being okay. And the illusion dissipates. You see there that that moment, in that moment, Loki had no grievance and he feels guilty and ashamed that he pushed her away. And so there's this love of their mother that unites these two brothers, you know, adopted or not, and um, they form a kind of unpredictable and unstable alliance. Perhaps you prefer one of your new companions, given that you seem to like them so much. Oh, this is much better. Whoa, costume's a bit much. It's so tight. Actually, when we filmed that scene, I sort of played Loki doing Captain America wearing the Captain America costume, which was a very strange and surreal moment. Nevertheless, enjoyable. Um, so I've got, got to feel that, what the, <laughs> the, whatever the, the feeling of wearing that suit anyway, which was definitely a moment. And then they played that footage to Chris and he did his best impression of me doing an impression of him and he does it brilliantly. Might as well be strangers now. 
Two sons of the crown. Set adrift. Nope. Thought you didn't want to talk about it. Here's the thing. I'm probably better off staying here on Sakaar. That's exactly what I was thinking. The elevator scene in Ragnarok, the dialogue was, was scattered across these different places as they were trying to escape and find their way through. Taika said, guys, do you know the rest of this scene? And we both said, yeah. He said, maybe we should just do, do one where we just do all of the dialogue here in the elevator. And you haven't really had a chance to catch up. And maybe you should just talk to each other. And Thor is quite honest with him. I thought we were gonna fight side by side forever, but at the end of the day, you're you and I'm me. And I don't know, maybe they're still good in you, but let's be honest, our paths diverged a long time ago. And I think it really affects Loki. He thinks, oh, actually, maybe, maybe I got this wrong. Maybe I did have a place in that family. Maybe, I, maybe this guy is my brother. But it was a really enjoyable scene because it was just a very quiet moment with Chris in a very calm space in a big, colorful, spectacular film. You will never be a god. Joe and Anthony Russo had said, this is one of the most important scenes in the film because it will help us, the audience, understand. If Thanos can take Loki out, he can take anyone out. And he does. The redemption of Loki as a character was, was achieved in that moment of sacrifice and catharsis. Risk his life to save his brother and call himself an Odin son. And I saw this, this sort of perfect closure in a way. Prince of Asgard. Odin's son. And I remember Josh Brolin could not have been sweeter. He was so generous and walked into a room and he uh, turned around and saw me come in and just broke into this big wide smile and opened up his arms and enveloped me in a big hug and said, I'm sorry, man. If it's all the same to you, I'll have that drink now. All right, get him on his feet. Now I'll stand around posing up a storm later. When I think of Endgame, I think of that the first scene we did, which was so surreal, where um, Robert Downey Jr., Chris Hemsworth, Chris Evans, Scarlett Johansson, Mark Ruffalo, and Jamie Renner were all wearing the same costumes they had been wearing seven years previously, including me. And we were in the same set, and we were all scratching our heads going, is this what's happened? Have I gone, am I in Back to the Future 2? I think the Hulk can't fit in the elevator. He smashes through the door on the ground floor in the lobby. In the melee, the Tesseract, also known as the Space Stone, rolls to Loki's feet and nobody's paying attention. And true to form, because he's the god of mischief, he mischievously picks it up and disappears in a puff of smoke. The timekeepers have built quite the circus. And I see the clowns are playing their parts to perfection. Big metaphor guy. I love it. Makes you sound super smart. I am smart. I know. OK. Where does he go? When does he go? How does he get there? These are the big questions. Uh, and if you've seen the trailer uh, for Loki, the show, you will know that Loki finds himself face to face with the TVA, uh, the Time Variance Authority, who are an organization within Marvel Comics uh, that govern the order of time. You're not big on trust, are you? You can trust me. Loki, I've studied almost every moment of your entire life. You've literally stabbed people in the back like 50 times. Why never do it again? I suppose Loki picking up the Tesseract in Endgame might have caused some concern. It is very exciting. The world of the TVA is, an, is a bureaucratic is a world of bureaucratic order. And of course, Loki is the god of mischief and chaos. So you have the forces of order and chaos coming together. And, um, and that's where our story starts.